Over the past year, science has taken a step forward and discovered just how rapidly and dangerously the nanoplastic threat is evolving. Have you ever wondered why? In recent years, we are increasingly facing a reality where antibiotics no longer work. Today, we can say with certainty that nanoplastic plays a direct role in the development of antibiotic resistance and helps bacteria mutate. Research from 2025 reveals that plastic is helping bacteria become resistant to antibiotics, fueling a crisis that modern medicine is struggling to contain. Why? Because plastic is an ideal platform for bacteria. Until recently, scientists already knew that microplastic serves as a convenient platform for bacterial colonization. On its surface, bacteria easily form biofilms. A biofilm is a dense, protective layer that shields bacteria from drying out, sunlight, immune system attacks, and most critically, the effects of antibiotics. It was also known that bacteria can survive on plastic longer than on other materials, sometimes for three days or more. All of this makes microplastic a key factor in the spread of dangerous microbes throughout the environment, in water, in soil, and at times even in food products. However, a recent study has led scientists to a critical discovery. Plastic aids bacteria not only physically, as a kind of shelter, but also biochemically, functioning as a sort of power bank. Research has demonstrated in laboratory conditions that when bacteria come into contact with microplastic, they activate a special type of metabolism associated with electron transfer. Simply put, Plastic particles can either donate electrons to bacteria or facilitate their transfer. This enhances the microbe's ability to survive under stress and accelerates their adaptation to antibiotics. This process is known as extracellular electron transfer, EET. It is significant because it provides bacteria with an auxiliary energy source that first enhances bacterial resilience, enabling more rapid replication, accelerated mutation, and the construction of highly durable, multi-layered biofilms. These biofilms function as fortresses, effectively blocking antibiotic agents from penetrating and reaching microbial targets. Second, this energetic reinforcement directly facilitates the development of antibiotic resistance. The bacteria not only endure, they begin actively synthesizing defensive mechanisms, enabling them to survive even the most potent pharmaceutical interventions. Moreover, even after the plastic is removed, the bacteria retain this enhanced capability. They have already mutated, adopted, and become stronger. They continue to construct resilient biofilms on other surfaces, even without the energy input once provided by plastic. For the first time, it has been demonstrated that microplastic is not merely an inert surface. It is an active participant in the development of antibiotic resistance. It alters bacterial metabolism and facilitates the selection of the most resilient and resistant strains. This means that plastic waste may be accelerating the emergence and spread of so-called superbugs, bacteria resistance to treatment. Let that sink in. Microplastic doesn't just help bacteria survive. It fuels them with energy, makes them stronger and more resilient and thus plays an active role in the development of antibiotic resistance. This discovery fundamentally shifts our understanding of plastic pollution and makes it even more alarming. With each passing year, the problem of antibiotic resistance grows more acute. 
In many countries, cases are already being reported in which standard medications fail and even minor infections become difficult to treat. If we do not find a solution, antibiotics may eventually become useless. And this extends far beyond antibiotics. We are already witnessing how plastic affects the effectiveness of a wide range of medical interventions, from tissue regeneration to life extension therapies. Treatments that delivered consistent results just yesterday are now becoming unreliable. The same medications are beginning to behave unpredictably, and the underlying reason is microplastic, and more precisely, its electrical charge. It interferes with biological processes, alters cellular behavior, and disrupts signaling pathways. We can no longer rely on predictability in medicine unless we account for the fact that the body now contains a factor capable of distorting everything, from immune response to cellular memory. Today, the market, the medical field, and even some scientific circles are actively discussing supposed methods of cleansing the body of microplastic. These include techniques that allegedly remove plastic from the blood and tissues, such as plasmapheresis, hemoperfusion, mechanical filtration systems, dietary absorbents, and natural supplements claiming to detoxify the body. At first glance, the logic seems sound. If there's a toxic substance in the body, it must be removed. But the truth is, these methods do not solve the problem, neither technically nor fundamentally. Microplastic, especially in its nanoform, has already penetrated your cells, your tissues, and your neurons. It's not simply floating in your bloodstream like a guest you can politely ask to leave it has integrated into your body. Yes, you can filter the blood, separate the plasma, and add a solution. But that solution likely contains plastic too. It leaches from the plastic IV bag, travels through the plastic tubing, and re-enters the body. We are using plastic in our very attempts to eliminate its consequences. Yes, such procedures may reduce the toxic burden but they do not accomplish the most critical task. They do not extract plastic from your cells. They do not neutralize its electrical charge. They do not restore disrupted signaling pathways. They do not protect the brain, the immune system, or the mitochondria.